Hello everybody. The purpose of this video is to augment the examples we've been doing in our uh, conditional probability the SQL project in uh, Matthew 43. If you've stumbled onto this video and you're not in my Matthew 43 class and you'd like to see the project that I'm talking about, uh, here's the web address. I wish I was slick enough to make that a hyperlink for you, but I'm not. <laughs> what we've been doing in this uh, project is dealing with Bayes' formula um, to approach some pretty powerful probability questions about drug testing and disease testing and things like that. However, uh, the title of this was using Bayes without using Bayes because using the formula itself tends to, um, let's say, it makes students run screaming. But I come at it from a contingency table point of view. So if you want to check out the uh, the link there, it'll actually walk you through more of what I'm going to be doing in this video. Now, as I said, we're talking about drug testing and disease testing in the project. So for this uh, for this video, we'll keep it a little bit more light, and we'll talk about spam. Uh, in particular, spam emails, not spam from Hormel. That's probably a copyright infringement. Now, spam email, and we will loosely def uh, define spam email as an email that you don't want to get in your inbox, whatever kind of email that is. Um, interestingly enough, Symantec in 2010 said that 90.4% of all email was spam. Um, it's kind of a staggering number to think about. You know, you think about every email, the, the trillions and trillions of emails that go out every year, and uh, 9 out of 10 of them are, uh, are unwanted ones. Kind of crazy when you think about that. Uh, if you're thinking back to the project, this is the equivalent of me telling you 20% uh, of people uh, use THC in the past 72 hours, or 1% of fish are infected with some kind of a, of a disease. I mean, this is a, this is a prior probability that's known from, uh, from research. Okay, so knowing that there's so much spam out there, uh, what software companies try to do is design products to stop it. So what PCMag.com did back in the day, I think this was 2004, uh, maybe 2005, they tested a number of, of uh, anti-spam products. Now I know this, this uh, text is very, very small, um, and it's not important that you, uh, that you can read it from this, this slide. What I circled there, though, is uh, interesting. It, it talks about uh, legitimate email being blocked and spam being allowed by the uh, by these particular software packages. More on that in a moment. I want to focus just on the editor's choice, which was Norton Anti-Spam 2004. Okay, here are the numbers that were uh, associated with Norton Anti-Spam 2004. The chance that a legitimate email gets blocked as spam is 3.2% according to their test. We call that a false positive in our project. That's like taking a disease test and testing positive for the disease, even if you don't actually have the disease. So in this case, this is a, a email that you want coming in, but the program is calling it spam. So 3.2%, fairly low. That means the chance of a true negative, its complement is 96.8%. That means it's a legitimate email coming in, and it's allowed to come in. Uh, if spam comes in, slightly different numbers. The chance that a spam gets blocked, 92.9%. That's a true positive. And the chance that it gets allowed through is 7.1%. That's a false negative. That's like, if you want to equate it to the examples in the project, that's having the disease, but the test saying that you don't have the disease. False negative. Okay, now what we did in the project was, rather than, as I said, attack the the, uh, the, the formulaic approach of using Bayes, we're going to say, let's just suppose 10,000 emails come into your, uh, to your inbox or attempt to get into your inbox. Now, using the numbers from before, from Symantec, 90.4% of them are going to be spam. So of those 10,000, I've split the 10,000 into two disjoint categories in a contingency table. 9,040 are, uh, are spam, <laughs> and 960 are, are not. They're, they're le legitimate emails. Okay, so so far so good. We're just, we're just splitting up the, uh, the, uh, the 10,000 emails. Now, we have to apply the program's response to these emails now. 
Now these are the these are the percentages from before: the true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative percentages. That was from a few a few slides back. What I want to do now is I want to actually apply those percentages to the numbers that we had from the previous, just like we did in the project. Okay, so we're going to take that 9,040, uh, the number of spams, and we're going to have the program identify 92.9 percent of them as spam, and that works out to be 8,398-ish. Okay, that's how many of those 9,040 get called spam. Moving down, these are the ones that are still spam, but the program misses. It's the other 7.1% of the 9,040. It comes out to just about 642. Moving on to the false positive numbers. Remember, there were only 960 legitimate emails out of the 10,000. And of those 960, 3.2% were still called spam by the email program. So that means 30, uh, just about 31 of them get labeled as spam and sent to the spam filter, which means the rest of the 960 just about 929 of them are allowed through. They are legitimate, and the program identifies them as legitimate. Okay, so now we have our we have our our disjoint cases of the 10,000. And as a little check, I like to add those four numbers up and just to make sure they actually sum back up to to 10,000. So they do. So we're in good shape. Okay. So here's a question. Norton, which is the program we're testing, blocks an email on the way in thinking that it's spam. So it's labeled it as spam. What's the chance it actually is spam? Okay, so in conditional probability uh, 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 formatting, it looks like that. What's the chance a blocked email is spam given that it's labeled spam? So here's your entire sample space. But as we spoke of in the project, you don't need your entire sample space for this because you know it was labeled as spam. So you only need to concern yourself with the top row of that contingency table. This is the beauty of conditional probability. You don't need to look at the entire sample space, just the part that you're concerned with at this moment. So looking at those numbers, the chance that an email coming in marked as spam actually is spam is the event space, which is just that, that roughly 8,398, divided by the new sample space, which is all the ones identified as spam, which is 8,398 plus the 31. Well, now 31 is not that much more, which means the chance that an email marked as spam actually is spam is 99.64%. Pretty high. You can feel pretty good about that, about that program blocking your spam. Now, let's, uh, let's look at a different question. Suppose Norton lets an email pass through, which means it's, it's identified it as not spam. What's the chance it actually is not spam? Okay, so just because it let it pass through doesn't mean it's an okay email. It, it could have been a spam that slid through. Okay, so what's the chance that an allowed email is ham given that it's labeled ham? Sorry, I uh, had to chuckle there because as I was doing the research for this, I discovered that um, tech guys and girls actually call legitimate emails ham. I don't know why, but they do. Anyway, so here's your original uh, contingency table. But again, remember, we don't need the entire thing. The program identified the email as ham, which means we only need the bottom row. So looking at it again, what's the chance an email is ham? Uh, excuse me, what's the chance that an email marked as ham actually is ham? So you take the ones that the uh, are legitimately marked as ham, which is the 929 roughly, and you divide it by the entire sample space of all those marked as ham, which is the 642 plus the 929, and you end up with roughly 59%. And some of you might look at that and say, that's kind of low. And if you think about it, compared to the 99.6%, you know, if it says it's if it says it's spam, there's a 99.6% chance that it actually is spam. So I dug a little deeper, and what I was able to find out was the reason this is so low is because they want to err on the side of caution. Uh, in other words, letting stuff through um, at the at the expense of blocking something, or not at the expense, excuse me, of blocking something that's uh, that's legitimate. So that's the closest I was able to uh, to get to a reason for the discrepancy. So hopefully this was able to assist you setting up your contingency tables for the project. And uh, those of you who found this video via other means, hopefully it helped you too. Thanks.